Welcome to the Hearthstone Beginner's Guide from Trash Can TV for 2019. If you are a beginner anywhere near a beginner's phase in Hearthstone, maybe you're an intermediate player but you want to learn more stuff about the game, how to manage your collection, how to most efficiently generate dust and coins and how to use your resources, this is the correct video that you wanted to listen to. So we have a few points, few guidelines that every Hearthstone player should operate by in order to maximize their efficiency because let's face it, not every player in Hearthstone can spend hundreds of dollars every month on buying bundles, correct JJ? Correct. So if you're not gonna do that and maybe you just can't afford that, then you need to be a little bit more careful and manage your collection efficiently in order to play all the decks that you want to play, correct? Yes. So we're gonna present you some points and uh, I think we're gonna get right into it. There's also gonna be uh, a full guide on what exact cards to craft in this enchant. We're gonna get to that later, but first of all, the first point is player tavern brawl. Every week there is tavern brawls, right? There is a tavern brawl in Hearthstone. It is free to enter and every week you're getting a reward right there. JJ already played this week's. You All you need to do is one win and it costs you nothing. It's always a new different kind of game. Sometimes you create your own deck. Sometimes like this week you're getting a random deck or the, the week that this is recorded, right? Yes. So it costs you absolutely nothing. Free pack every single time. Sometimes you'll get a card back but there's always a free reward from just playing your tavern brawl. So play your tavern brawl, don't miss out on that, it's just free money. Second point is, you're gonna wanna start off by playing on the ladder. Now you have the beginner experience, can you get into the collection maybe? Yeah. Now you have the beginner's experience in Hearthstone now, with the levels 50 to 25, so if you're just starting off, that's a great way to do this. You're not gonna have a lot of dust, but there is very good, very, very cheap decks in the game. We actually did a full budget series, we had a budget deck for every single class. Links to that is in the description, did you can put an info card there yeah, when you sure. add it? So, uh, Definitely go check it out on our channel, Trash Game TV uh, budget deck. We, for example, we highly recommend that mid range hunter that we played. Very cheap, very very effective deck. Find your deck. You want to find your deck when you start off. It's important to settle down on one deck at first. That way, you're spending the least amount of dust by trying on it, by like playing everything and changing decks every week, right? You can try some stuff out, but find your deck, and then get on the ladder and play on the ladder because. There's no entrance fee on the ladder. You can play as much as you want to. And essentially you can make a hundred gold every day just from playing on the ladder and winning games. Because you're getting ten gold for three wins each. Yes. You can do that ten times per day. So that way you can, if you want to do that, you can win 30 games a day on the ladder, gain the ladder bonuses at the end of the year, and also gain those, those 100 gold pieces every single day, which also, is a lot. Also, of course, uh, when we're talking about getting gold, there's also quests. The quests, right, that's what I was getting into yeah, next. Okay. So you want to go to your quest page real quick to show sure. that off? Alright, we have a bunch of different types of quests in the game. Most of the quests that you're gonna see in your main menu, and you're getting the one new quest every day, alright, that's also a thing. One new quest every day, three quest slots. Now the smarter amongst you might now have realized that that means that you should never go three or more days without playing Hearthstone, because you're, gonna because you're missing out on quests. You're gonna miss out on quests because when your deck, when your quest loss is full, you're not getting new ones. Which also means that JJ needs to get a quest done within the next hour or so because it's 10:40 p.m. as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. If he doesn't do that, he's missing tomorrow's quest, yes. which would be inefficient. So JJ, I'm expecting you to get your uh, warrior mastery done before we are all said and done today. But uh, this is how it's gonna look. Most of the quests, the majority of the quests that you're gonna get are 50 or 60 gold quests. If you're getting a 50, there's an option to re-roll that. You don't see it right here, but uh, every day you get an option to re-roll a quest, which is get out, get that quest out of there, replace it with something new. It's gonna be like, can you show where the symbol would be if it were there in the top right-hand corner of a quest? That's where it would be. There would be a symbol to re-roll this quest. You want you generally want to re-roll all your 50 gold quests, because those are the weakest quests that are in the game. You would want... A uh, 60 gold quest, if you get that, you will do it, because that's usually, in most cases, the best you can get. Sometimes there'll be even better special quests. There's a quest where you can get a pack for winning a few solo challenges in the monster hunt, the dungeon run, and uh, that will give you a free classic pack. Sometimes you'll get a uh, special quest that will give you 100 gold, for example, for, for winning 5 games. There's a quest called, I think, Total Dominance, yes. which shows up pretty rarely, but when it does, 
great luck because that's gonna give you the most bang for your buck, right? And there's also one that uh, allows you to gain 80 gold for challenging a friend to play head to head. Which best is the, quest. the best quest because it gives 80, 80 gold to you and your friend. There's 160 in total and you just need to play. You don't need, need to play anything specific. You don't need to play and win. You just need to have a, uh, a friend online on Hearthstone. And uh, if you don't have that at all, by the way, you can totally hit us up on YouTube. I got this quest, I need to do this. One of us is gladly ready, willing to do that for you, believe me. But uh, I'm, I'm not trying to, to pull money for ourselves here. But uh, generally, if you don't, if you really don't have, a, because there's people who struggle with that, right? Yeah. If, if no, none of your friends play Hearthstone, uh, we'll, and you got that quest sitting around, hit us up, we'll do it for you. No, no problem, right? But uh, yeah, quests. Be up on your quests. You want to reroll the 50s, the other ones you want to do. And you want to complete those and get that extra gold. Because quests are going to be your main income in Hearthstone, along with the, rat with the ladder play. But you're not going to win 30 games every day, because you don't have that much time to play, usually every day. So quests, your main income, pay attention to those guys. Never let there be three, or, like, three quests and then and the next day you're missing out on one. So get at least one open quest slot every day. Okay, we talked about the Tavern Brawl and the, uh, the ladder play. One mode that you should avoid, probably as a beginner, is the Arena. I want to show off how the Arena works real quick. So, the Arena is supposed to be more of a competitive place, which in reality isn't exactly always the case. JJ's in Arena right now. The Arena works the following way. You're paying an entrance fee, and that entrance fee is going to be either 150 gold or, I think, 2 bucks. I, I never pay with money there. I think it's also two bucks, which, uh, get the welcome bundle, it's probably more valuable. But, uh, yeah, in the arena you can enter for 150 gold, and you can get big rewards depending on how many wins you get. Now you got three losses. When you lost three games, you're out. And the way that this works is you don't construct your own deck, but you're drafting it. You're getting a draft, which means that you get 30 draft picks of three cards each, and you're picking one card from a collection of three every time and hopefully constructing yourself a decent deck. So you can see on the right, this is the deck that JJ is currently playing the arena with. And he's playing pretty well. He's got five wins so far, and he still has one loss open. Next time he loses a game, that's going to be the end of his run. You can uh, win a maximum of 12 games in the arena. The problem really with the arena is that it is, as opposed to rank play, it is probably more luck-based because of the draft. If you get a really good draft, you tend to get good arena runs, so it's less consistent. And though that is the case, that the difference in arena is being made by that small percentage that is actually uh, skill-based. There's two, two types of players who play arena. The complete beginners, because they just want to, because they think I don't have good cards, arena evens the playing field. And the super pros, who can just be like, I'm so good at this game, um, even though there's a lot of RNG involved, that little bit of skill that matters, I'm gonna have the most of that, so I'm going to win an arena. And really, only those really good players should be playing arena. So, as a complete beginner, avoid it. I know it's tempting because there's good stuff. Trust me, when you hit 12 wins, you're getting good stuff. Like, uh, ha have you ever had 12 wins? No. Okay, I, I recently had it once, I had it once so far, by the way. I've hit 12 wins once, so it doesn't happen a lot. And the 5 wins is actually already pretty good, I think. Um, you're gonna break even around four to five wins, I wanna say. And you're gonna go infinite, and by infinite, I mean being able to finance your next arena run with what you win, around seven wins. But uh, I think you, you win four, I think you're getting a pack and around 50 gold. So you're getting your months, like, you're getting the value that you put in, about, right? But you're not guaranteed those five wins, so it's a risk. It's a bit of a gamble, and uh, if you don't have the knowledge drafting and you don't have that much knowledge playing because it's a different game as it is on the ladder I would recommend you staying away from arena if you're a beginner in Hearthstone when you get packs be it from quests be it from rank play at the end of the month or be it from the tavern brawl just open those packs you don't want to let packs sit there or sit around unopened because there's value there is dust in there and there's cards in there so no reason to keep packs for like a big opening uh, if you're always in a pinch for stuff you're maybe on a budget as a beginner open your packs one thing that you should consider doing, and a lot of people don't have a lot of money to spend. They can't afford to buy um, the huge bundle that costs like 70 bucks that comes with every expansion, right? Which is understandable. 
But if you can afford it at all, that vel welcome bundle in the top left in the store right there. It doesn't say best value for nothing. This thing is worth it. That's the that's really the one thing that you can buy for money in the store that is actually worth it. Cuz for 5 bucks, you're getting 10 classic packs, which are the best packs to get, and we'll get into that. But you're getting a guaranteed legendary dragon with that, which is going to be one of those six I'm going to put on the screen right now. All of them except for Nosdormu, are very, very good and playable cards and very much worth uh, the five bucks almost by itself. But then you're also getting the 10 classic packs that are, that's going to be a great foundation for your collection. That's, um, that's 50 cents a pack. If you go to, just for comparison, go to the classic pack. So two packs right there, you'd be paying $2.99 and the best value is 60 packs, you'd be paying 70 bucks. So even for the best value there, you'll be paying over one dollar, or one buck, in this case euros, one buck per uh, pack, which is a lot of money. So that best value, welcome bundle, consider it. If This is the best way to get your collection kickstarted. If you can afford that at all, five bucks is not much, that's really gonna be worth it if you can buy that. Question that we've been getting a lot is what pack should I buy? And that's I think the question that everyone wonders about, right? You play Hearthstone Star playing seeing all these different expansions, what packs should I get? The answer, if you don't know, if there's no specific expansion that you're looking for right now, the answer is classic packs as a beginner, because the classic pack has two distinct advantages over the other ones. First, it doesn't rotate out. In Hearthstone, we have a rotation where an expansion, like you see, for example, the Rastakhan's Rumble expansion, right there, or the one before that, we can see those two. That will be the uh, Boomsday, Right, the Witchwood, the Kobolds and Catacombs, the Frozen Throne, and the Journey to Angoro are the current expansions that are in standard. And this is the keyword, standard. Because we have a standard rotation, which means that sets, like expansions like this, rotate out. They come into the game, but they only stay for a limited amount of time. Uh, they tend to stay between um, a year and four months to two years, depending on when during the year that they are going to be released. This Rastakhan's Rumble one was just released, and it's going to rotate out in April 2020. And uh, the ones that were released last year, that being Angoro, Frozen Throne, and the Kobolds and Catacombs, are rotating in April 2019. So, you would not, as a new player, want to buy any of those three expansion packs, because they're going to be leaving standard very soon, and you're not going to be able to play them on your standard rank ladder. Classic packs. The advantage, they don't rotate out. The classic set is the foundation of Hearthstone, they always stay in standard. And the second distinct advantage is that the uh, classic pack has the highest percentage of legendaries being pulled. It has the highest quota of legendary pulls in their pack, statistically. And um, like I said, it's the foundation of the game. The classic pack, the classic bundle, welcome bundle, always a good idea to uh, kind of lay the foundation of your collection. Now. Other than that, if you're looking for expansions, I would recommend you always buy expansions that are not rotating out. In this case, Rastakhan's Rumble, Boomsday, Witchwood are good expansions to buy. So those three expansions are, are the ones that I would recommend at this point investing in as a new player. The other three, Angoro, Frozen Throne, Kobolds, should stay away from those because you're not going to get a lot of value out of that. Because you're probably not going to play a lot of Wild and uh, to be... Efficient, as efficient as possible, stay away from those packs, even though there might be some good cards in there. They're rotating soon, the game is going to reshape itself completely, so uh, think long term more than short term to get more value out of your packs. One other thing to note is also that if you're buying packs, if within the first 10 packs of each expansion that you buy, you're guaranteed one legendary. That is correct. And if you really want to pay attention, you're guaranteed to get one legendary at least every 40 packs and one epic every 10 packs. That's a very good point. There is no in-game counter for that, you would have to pay attention to that yourself. Correct. That's a very good point, which means that if you're looking to get that legendary value, you go buy 10 classic packs and then you go buy 10 Rastakhan packs and 10 Boomsday packs and then 10 Witchwood packs before you buy any other packs. Yeah, and right? also if you have like bought a bunch of packs and haven't gotten legendary, you might want to get till the next legendary till you switch to the next expansion. Exactly. So say you bought 30 Rastakhan's packs right now, or 20. There's no legend in there. You probably should buy some more Rastakhan packs because the legend is coming soon. So yeah, that's a very good point, JJ. Um, 
didn't even write it down in my notes, but that's a fact. So uh, yeah, that's some, there's some pro tips for you there. Alright, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this game. The collection. This is where all the big, the big money making goes down, because the smarter you are in managing the cards that you have, and more importantly the ones that you don't have, is going to determine how your bank account is going to look. In JJ's case, it's looking pretty poor right now. There's 110 dust down there, but that's not a lot. But uh, he does have some gold and a new expansion was recently released. I know he crafted some cards because JJ knows, at least to a degree, how to manage his dust and his coins. What you want to do is we have golden cards in the game, which is cool. For example, you see that innervate, that golden innervate? Yeah, that's cool, right? But the thing that a golden card does is like real gold, it's for rich people. And if you're not Hearthstone rich, you don't need those. Now, this is a basic card, which means that you cannot craft or disenchant this. However, before this game, before before we recorded this, actually, we opened a, um, a pack, and JJ just so happened to pull the Pint Size Summoner right there. You see in the top left corner, new card. Happens to be a golden one. Now, JJ, would you like to please, uh, first of all, look at how many Pint Size Summoners you have in your collection? Let's see. Oh, yeah, they're already. Don't don't type. It's already there. Oh, right. It's already there on the screen. So you can see that JJ there has two regular pint sized summoners and one golden one. And uh, you can actually see the same phenomenon in the Rock Pool Hunter in the bottom right. That means that that golden pint sized summoner is literally of no value other than it being golden. You can never play more than two copies of the same card in the same deck. And since JJ already has. The two basic ones, and you can see in the bottom left it says disenchant for 100 dust. Check out the regular one first. It says disenchant for 20 dust. Now you might be asking yourself, what sense does that make? Why is it that one worth five times more? Because it's golden. And that's the way that it works in Hearthstone. The golden cards, dust for more. And they're also they're also more expensive to create, believe it or not. So they're just so this is our fundamental tip on managing card collections. Do not value gold cards, because don't place any value on gold cards, they're the same cards, it just costs you more dust. So what JJ is going to do, because he's smart, he's going to dust this golden pint size summoner. It's a rare, so he's going to dust that for a hundred dust, which is lagging the game. <laughs> it always does though, when you're dusting like the golden ones, it's like, oh, you want? You sure you have... And he's going to get a hundred dust for that. And all of a sudden, we're at 210 dust, and JJ, what have you effectively lost from that, in terms of your gameplay? Nothing. Nothing! Because he can still play a deck with his two pint-sized summoners in there. Not that he would ever want to do that. I was about to say. Because this card is terrible now. It used to be good. Like, way back when. Like, in the Middle Ages. And the same thing could he also could do for the Rock Pool Hunter, so if you want to click out that. You got the Rock Pool Hunter in the bottom right. He already has two basic ones. What is he gonna lose from dusting that? It's a it's a common card. What is he gonna lose effectively from dusting that? Nothing. So why not take the 50 free dust, right? Just makes sense to do that. So uh, you wanna do that? Alright, great. So that's the first major point of managing your collection. Golden cards are worth nothing. Now, there is moments where you wanna keep a golden card. For example, if uh, say you wanna play one specific deck and um, you need those cards. Let's say you want to play the mid-range hunter. Can you click into the mid-range hunter? Just the mid-range hunter shell. We have a budget version of the mid-range hunter. This is not it, but uh, you can go find it. It's a very good deck. We recommend it. Say this mid-range hunter has the very key card Savannah Highman. You see it in the bottom, right? So say you went on ahead and you bought you the welcome bundle. And you got a regular Savannah Highman and a golden Savannah Highman. And that's the only two high mains you've got. And you want to play this deck, and I want to play both high mains. You could dust the golden high main, and from the dust that you get, craft a regular high main. But at that point, there's no there's no real need in doing that. Because what you can do is you can just play the golden one as long as you're actually using it. And at some point, you're pretty much guaranteed to get another regular high main in the pack at one point. Because it's classic, right? And that's when you dust the golden one for 100 free dust. So usually, you want to get rid of golden cards, they're no more valuable unless you have less than two regular ones, and you're actually playing. Now, now here's a point of debate, right? You can see it on the screen, Golden Bestial Wrath. That card right there, JJ only, that's the only copy of Bestial Wrath that JJ has. And here's where it becomes interesting, because this card is effectively terrible. 
this card will never be played. JJ will never play this card. But I myself currently have, I believe, a golden copy of Beast Your Wrath in my collection. And it's tough to dust this because you don't have anymore. Because the mindset easily tends to be, I might need this at some point. And this is where I represent the idea that you have to be pragmatic. You have to know that you're never going to play Beast Your Wrath and you have to dust this card. But this is up to opinion to a certain degree. JJ won't do it, right? You won't do it. No. He's not going to dust this card, which is... In my opinion, bad dust management, but uh, if if Beast of Wrath were to ever be playable somewhere near good, he might have a point. He might end up having a point, and I'm sitting there with no Beast of Wrath if I intend to um, at some point dust mine. So that's a matter of opinion. If you're a beginner, you're getting a card that is not played at all, which you need to inform yourself before, by the way. Don't just go dusting cards that you got, right? We had... Um, a question at one point someone asked us he got uh, King Crush he, he, he pulled a King Crush and he asked us should he dust it to save up for Lyra I said no because King Crush is a playable minion sees play it's in the classic set don't don't dust this to craft another legend at some point later right Beast of Wrath listen this card you can dust it's not gonna be playable but say you get uh, say you get that high main you're not trying to play it right now but you don't have Two regular high mains, it's debatable. But generally, golden cards can be disenchanted. The worst that can happen is that you can disenchant that. And the thing with golden cards is that you can disenchant them for the same amount of dust that it will cost you to create the regular one. Yes. Which means that even if he dusted this, at some point he would want to play it, he could craft a regular beast your wrath for those 400 dust which effectively still would not lose him anything. But uh, he's holding on to this, I would not hold on to this, it's a matter of opinion. Inform yourself how good a card is, okay? If a card is objectively bad and likely to never see play, I say go ahead and dust it. If you're a collector, if you don't want to do that, and uh, sacrifice some of your efficiency, then hold on to it, but this guide is about maximizing efficiency. So for all intents and purposes, you're in a situation like this, you dust that card and get your 400 dust. Because that's uh, that's a Savannah High Main. That's four Savannah High Mains, regular Savannah High Mains for this card that's sitting there essentially dead. And uh, from the golden cards, kind of over this one to bad cards, right? If you have bad cards, like really bad cards that are not seeing play, and again, inform yourself about that. We have the legendary guide out already. For Legends, specifically, because they're the biggest investment, you should really be informed about that. Which is why we have a video on all the Legends that are currently in the game. Should you dust them, should you keep them, or should you specifically craft them? How valuable are they? How likely are they to see play? How good are they? What's the value in them? Go check that video out. There's an info card there, hopefully. Yes. JJ remembers to do that. Link in the description. Uh, the, the full dusting guide for all the Legendaries. Uh, highly recommend it's very important to, to know about that stuff but uh, I, I just gave the uh, example of King Crush let's let's pick out a really bad legendary let's say uh, Milhouse Mana Storm <laughs> you, were, you were talking about uh, what, do you, what were you thinking of uh, I was gonna say Celestia Harbinger Celestia that's an awesome one but uh, let's go look for Milhouse Mana Storm just uh, type that in now, Milhouse Mana Storm is almost is it's a meme in the Hearthstone community because of how bad this card is, but it's a classic legendary card. Now, right there, JJ, that thankfully does not have it. Um, this card is terrible, and we can say with all the confidence in the world that this card will never be good in competitive play because it's terrible. Its downside with making the enemy enemy spells cost zero is way way too high for um for the stat line the stat bonus that it gives you if you pull a card like this say you pulled millhouse you dust that card you go and dust this card and take your 400 dust now for cards that are on the verge tough that's what our guide is for right that's what our legendary disenchanting and crafting guide is for when you have a specific card you're not sure about go check out that video so you are informed Cards like Millhouse, you dust them no matter what. I have probably dusted like three copies of Millhouse in my life, and I love it. Because, of course, when you dust them, you can pull them again, which some people say that that's bad. That's the reason why you should keep those. I'm gonna say 
Nah, not if you're on a not if you're on a budget. Not if you're buying all the bundles. Because if you're not buying all the bundles, you're on a budget. Keeping this around will end up costing you more than disenchanting it and essentially having bad luck and pulling it again. And then you're just dusting it again and the same thing happens, right? If you have every legendary in the game, then yes, keep those around, because you're only get, gonna get better ones, obviously. But for a beginner who doesn't put hundreds of dollars into the game, or whatever currency you want, uh, you dust those cards. The next thing would be that I just talked about rotation in the uh, pack topic. Rotation also affects your collection, because you might not really play wild at all. And uh, I'm not a wild player myself, there's people who play more wild than they do standard, but uh, for this guy, we're assuming you're playing standard, the standard ladder. When cards rotate out, which is going to become relevant in April again, Angoro, Frozen Throne, Kobolds are going to rotate out. Those cards will no longer be playable in standard. At that point, you have a decision to make. Do I want to keep those cards? Because eventually I might end up wanting to play them at some point in Wild during my Hearthstone career, or do I keep uh, do I disenchant those cards to get the dust value to invest into new cards for the next standard year? Uh, I tend to go with the notion to disenchant most of the cards, at least, at least the ones that you know you're probably not going to play to get the value out of them because it's more efficient. I don't know how you look at that. I keep all my cards. You're keeping all of your cards? Yes. So again, JJ is a little bit less strict about that whole efficiency thing. Um, but you... Okay, at this point it becomes a matter of just personal judgment how strict you want to be. Of course, that means that uh, JJ is gonna be JJ is not gonna have as much dust during the next uh, next rotation as I, for example, am going to have with dusting most of my my cards from those three sets. So that's a matter of personal judgment. Uh, I am very much for dusting all your stuff that rotates out because I only play standard, but uh, that's only to heighten the efficiency. I like it that way. You might not agree with that, but uh, but that's okay. The next one, and this is a little bit of a pro tip, right? Like a really, really pro tip. A lot of people don't know about this. There's a thing called the Hall of Fame. And uh, if you look, for example, you can find it in the uh, right there on the bottom. Those are the cards that were rotated out of standard, even though they were classic cards. Which I just said, wait, classic cards don't rotate out. Well, some of them do. Because Blizzard decides to handpick some cards almost, basically each year they do that, right? They pick out some cards and rotate it into this Hall of Fame, which means that those cards are now essentially also in Wild. And yes. no longer playable in Standard. You can see the Cold Light, the Azure Drake, Molten Giant now. That happens for a number of reasons. Cards like Azure Drake, or you can, for example, see Ragnaros the Fire Lord, which JJ doesn't have, but it's under crafting. Ragnaros the Fire Lord, they all used to be in Standard and in Classic. Those cards were rotated out because of their power level, because they were inc incredibly strong. You look at Sylvanas Windrunner, and uh, right there. And you look at cards like Cold Like Oracle, which JJ does have. Those cards were rotated out because Blizzard believed their impact on the way that a certain archetype, in this case the Mill archetype, is co is constructed to be too consistent and just perpetually dictating exactly how a certain type of deck works. If they want more variety, they rotate out those types of cards. And there's likely to be another one of those Hall of Fame rotations. They always come along with the actual rotations with the change of year, of the Hearthstone year. So there's going to be a Hall of Fame uh, in this this year, probably around April when the rotation happens. And uh, there's a little thing that they do which is very much appreciated by the community. The cards that they do rotate into the Hall of Fame, you will get your dust back for those cards. Meaning that when... Um, the, and you will get the full dust, meaning that last year, when those guys, the Cold Light Oracles rotated, JJ received 200 dust for that. Yes. And JJ received 200 dust for that without having to disenchant them at all. Which is really, really good. That They only do that for the Hall of Fame, by the way. And that's a really, really good thing. Which means that you can take advantage of that. There's a small thing there, which means that you can just craft the cards that are going to the Hall of Fame when they, once they are announced. Yeah. They are typically announcing them a little bit before the stuff actually happens, saying, for example, last year Molten Giant rotated, right? Yes. Uh, a lot of people didn't have Molten Giants. Last year, what we would do, I don't know, you apparently didn't do it. I don't think I had a dust at the time. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but I did do it. When I heard that Molten Giant was going to rotate, I didn't have a Molten Giant, I went ahead and crafted me some Molten Giants. Because when the rotation happened, I got those 800 dust coins back. 
uh, complete. Note that it only applies to the first two copies. N- only the There's first no two copies. There's no point in crafting ten copies yes, or anything. Yes, that is correct. But I got that three hundred, that free eight hundred dust. Plus, I could then later disenchant my copies of the cards and get more dust. Essentially, make profit. So yeah, the basic idea is he invested eight hundred dust and got a thousand back. That is correct because I can disenchant them as well. So. I'm assuming, I'm not going to guarantee this, so don't come scream at me if they happen to not do it that way this year. But they've always done it that way in the past. And I'm expecting Blizzard to do that the same, to do the same thing because it's, frankly, it's uh, I mean, it's they, just the right thing they to will do. mention how it works in the article when they yeah, announce them. So. Exactly, so uh, you should also pay attention to um, our channel because we do Hearthstone reports when that stuff happens, important stuff happens. We're doing those on Sundays, so... Uh, if you can afford to do it, subscribe to Trash Can TV. Just kidding, it's free, which is more of a reason to do it. Subscribe to our channel for Hearthstone updates. Also, of course, the Legendary Crafting Guide. But we we always have you covered on that sort of news. Uh, so you never have to worry about missing out on anything like that. Hall of Fame cards. Craft them when they are announced to make some dust profit. Now, for more advanced players, there is one more uh, pro tip that we have. That might not necessarily apply to beginners as much, but um, if you've already experienced a nerf before, you've played long enough to to have witnessed a nerf, what they do is when a card is nerfed, and most recently it hit cards like Nourish, and hit cards like Level Up, for a short period after a card is altered, you will be able to disenchant it for full value. Which means that, for example, Nourish is a rare card, you once spent 200 dust creating both of your Nourishes, for a limited amount of time, you can then disenchant those two cards for the 200 dust that you used to create. To not, um, basically to not incur a loss for you through no fault of your own because the card is now bad because it got nerfed. Because that can happen at any given time, there's a strategy to hold duplicate cards if you don't require the dust. You can see right there, there's a feature disenchant extra cards, which will disenchant all the cards that are duplicates in JJ's collection already. But, so you don't have to go through the entire collection to do that yourself. This is a very useful tool to, you know, filter your collection the, the best way and uh, efficiently manage your, your dust, right? But if you don't need your dust for anything, it is better to hold on to those copies of cards than to hold on to a lot of dust just sitting around that you're not using. Because it's just the possibility that a nerf comes around and one of these cards is hit with that and you can get more dust from dusting it at that point, right? Now, I'm not saying that you should bank on keeping all your your cards, your dupes, and uh, never disenchanting anything in hopes of making profit from that at some point, or getting better value out of that, which I should say, at some point, when those cards are um, eventually nerfed, because most cards won't be nerfed. But uh, what we're saying is, if you don't need dust right now, but you have dupes, hold on to that. Only hit that button that disenchant extra cards button when you're actually also going to spend the dust that you're getting from that on crafting something right away. The same thing applies, of course, to disenchanting golden cards. Yeah, obviously, right? It applies to all the cards. J- just saying. Yeah, yeah. You only want to disenchant stuff if you're going to use the dust right away. Because just the dust sitting around, you're not getting interest on that. That's not how Hearthstone works. Unfortunately, that would be great, by the way. Getting interest on dust. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. That would be amazing, or in gold. But uh, new, new feature for, for Blizzard. No, that's not gonna happen. But uh, that's more of an advanced tip. Also, in the same vein, uh, you might want to disenchant all copies of a card that has just been nerfed if you're not currently using it in a deck. Yeah. Even if it's beyond the two copies, because you are going to either pull it at some point again or it's going to rotate out. So the extra copies that you would then later get once they reset it to the can default to value n- would be worse. Can you go to Nourish real quick? I want to just give that example. That's actually a really good one. So this card, Nourish, was recently nerfed. And uh, I once created both of those copies, 400 uh, dust each, to play in my druid deck. When this card was nerfed, I could disenchant it 400, right, for the full value. And I actually did do that, even though it was still in standard, it's still in classic, right, it's still playable. I, I actually dusted all of my nourishes. I don't have any nourishes now. The reason for that being that this card became bad by the nurse, which is, means that now it's not really played anymore. And if it were to ever be good again, the worst thing that could happen is I could recraft those two for the same price. That's what JJ was referring to there. Yes. So that's a very good point as well. So uh, I think we can wrap this up at this point. Yeah. 
Thank you for watching the entire guide. I hope this wasn't too confusing. I hope you learned something from that. And uh, be sure to follow those rules to manage your gold, your dust, the most efficient way. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments. We respond to everything. Well, everything that is worth responding to. A everything that's more than you guys are bums, stop making videos, right? Anything above that, we will respond. A any questions gameplay-wise, management-wise, we take our time to try and respond to every single comment. Uh, and help every one of y'all out so any questions drop them in the comments and uh, again go check out that legendary crafting and disenchanting guide to be informed about what cards what legends more specifically are safe to disenchant to get some of that dust value in the collection so thank you for watching leave a like on this video we'd appreciate that for our efforts and uh, yeah subscribe to our channel as well like i've said stay up to date and sometimes we do entertaining hearthstone gameplay as well Occasionally, if it happens to be entertaining. But thank you for watching. JJ, we're going to see you in the next one. That's it? That's it.